Wild onions have, is that going to come into focus? Wild onions have a hollow stem. So this is actually wild onion. You can see that the stem is hollow and not flat. Down here at the bottom, it kind of looks like if we pull it up or dig it up, it's probably going to look like it has some onion bulbs on the ends of it. don't really need a lot of this for what I'm about to show you guys, but I do need a pretty good sized clump of it. And here's what I was after. So about wild onions, it's edible just like green onions you grow in your garden. The stems are edible, the bulbs are edible, and uh, I'm going to make a recipe out of this that I am going to share on my YouTube channel. Yay! It's a, uh, it's a pretty interesting recipe, I will tell you that. So the first thing you want to do is get these cleaned up. Uh, get all the dirt off of them. Go ahead and clean up the stems, the bulbs, everything. So when all is said and done, this is what you're going to end up with. You're going to have some onion bulbs with the roots and the stem. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go in and cut these roots off. And then we're going to cut this onion from one end to the next in about one inch pieces. If there's any bad spots on the, on the stem, we'll get rid of them. So let me go ahead and get the rest of this cut up, and I'll bring you back when we get that done. So this is what I end up with. Probably about a cup. And these might be actually just a little bit young. So I am going to stick them into the blender real quick on chop. Next two steps I'm just going to tell you right now. Go ahead and get you an empty bowl. Pretty large. I don't know how many cups this is. Probably holds 12, 16 cups. Then you're going to want to get you a pan on the stove. And put four cups of water in it. And bring it to a boil. It'll still work. So cover it with a lid. Let it come to room temperature. It might take three to six hours. I'll bring you back when I get to there. All right. For the next step. You're going to want to prepare five cups of sugar and a package of pectin into a bowl. I'm using Sure Gel for this one. Sometimes I use the ball. I don't really have a preference. Um, I usually buy the ball in the bulk. And I buy the Sure Gel from Amazon in bulk packaging. It's usually like eight boxes when you do it that way. Um, this just makes it easier for me because it's already pre-measured and I just open it up and dump it in there. But it's kind of important that you mix the pectin with the sugar while they're both dry it makes it go much much easier also keeps the pectin from clumping up then i just use a spoon of some sort to get these mixed
So the next thing you want to do is you want to take your bowl that has your wild onion water mixture and you want to mix that into your sugar and pectin. Once you have that done, you're going to add two tablespoons of lemon juice to it. Lemon juice, I'm actually using bottled even though I have a lemon tree in there with lemons on it. I just mostly want to get this used up. One. There's two. Give that a quick stir. Then we're going to add this bowl into a pan on the stove. You want to make sure you get as much of the sugar out that might be in the bottom. And next, you're going to turn your stove on. And I usually start out with a medium heat. Now this will actually start to happen fast. The easiest way for me to tell you how to do this is Turn your stove on a temperature that you think that this is going to boil at. On my stove, which goes from 0 to 10, 10 being the hottest heat, I usually start about a 7 or an 8. As soon as I see the first bubble that it's going to boil, I turn it down to 6 and I start stirring it very quickly. Because sugar water can very easily boil over. So make sure that you're using a pot that is way larger than the liquid that's in there. For instance, this pot, the liquid only comes to about here in, on the inside. I'm going to remove it from the heat temporarily. Grab one of my frozen spoons out of the freezer and test to see how it gels up. For this next part, you're going to be taking jars, canning jars, and using a ladle to fill it up. So whenever I get jars that aren't all the way full, these are the ones that go in the refrigerator and get used right away. The next step you want to do is prepare your water bath canner or just some way to do a water bath on these. If you're going to store them long term, you want to do a water bath for about five minutes and rolling boiling water. Basically what I did, I washed out the pan that I'm that I used to make the uh, jelly in. I just washed it out that way the pectin and the sugar don't have time to set up and get hard. So I washed it out, filled it up with water. I've only got three pints to do. That way I don't have to drag out my water bath canner and uh, which is going to take a lot longer for the water to heat up. But I'm going to bring this to a rolling boil. Then I'm going to stick my jars in there for five minutes. 
Then once they've been in there for five minutes, I'm going to pull the jars out and put them on a cooling rack. That'll seal the lids for long-term storage. Okay, I'm going to put my jars in here now. Those jars are hot, so make sure you use something to set them in there with. probably overfilled this pan then I'm going to set a timer for five minutes our time is up now I'm going to remove the jars and place them on a cooling rack. Here's our jars on the cooling rack. You should, over time, hear the lids pop to indicate they are sealed. And what you are left with, you are left with a wild oniony tasting garlic tasting chive tasting sweetness in a jar that is absolutely amazing to put on hamburgers and really just about any dish that you can use onions in and you would like to have a really sweet taste added to it now some people are going to say, oh my God, the inside of my house stunk so bad when I was making this. And yeah, it does. But it dissipates within an hour or two after the process is completed. Once you taste this, you will not be disappointed. And your cost is a little bit of sugar, a little bit of pectin, and a little bit of thyme. As always... I say this all the time on my Instagram pictures when I'm posting wild edibles. Eat what nature provides. You can greatly reduce your grocery shopping bills. If you grow your own vegetables, that even reduces it even more. There's a lot of wild edibles that are great this time of year. And wild onions is just one of them. When you taste this, you'll wonder how you went your whole entire life and never had this before. As many people did that tried the dandelion jelly recipe or the red bud jelly recipes I'll link to in the card index top right. I'll also put them in the description. DIY homemade hamburger bones. Two hamburgers. We're about to have this wild onion jelly today so this is what it looks like just so you know with cancer there are still a lot of foods I can't eat with throat cancer during recovery I still have open sores on my throat so a lot of foods I have to keep to just like bare minimum and a hamburger is a good example I can't have like a lot of foods or a lot of toppings on it that I would normally have but I can have this jelly like I said it works anywhere that you can use onions it gives you a very uh, sweet onion taste and it's absolutely amazing so uh, give it a try let me know what you think thanks for watching don't forget to hit the like subscribe button Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I upload videos. As always, God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your homesteads. Thank you.